Hello, awesome fourth grade writers. I want to show you a little video on writing a hook. And I have a fish and a fish hook on here because it's just like fishing. When you hook a fish, if you take a look at this hook right here, there's this little branch right here. It gets stuck in their mouth and that's how you catch a fish. And writing a hook in writing is the same way. You want to hook your reader and catch their attention so they read yours. And like as a teacher, you want me to read yours first because yours is the most interesting and you do that with a hook and you got to do it at the very beginning of your writing because that's the first chance you get okay just like when you first meet somebody that first impression is so important a hook is just as important for writing so i want to show you there are lots of different kinds of hooks available just like there's lots of different hooks for fishing but the two that we're going to look at in fourth grade is first an interesting fact so the first type is called an interesting fact. And we're going to look at each story that we've read. Oh, you know, remember we read about beavers. We read about giraffes, chocolate chips. And then this week we're reading, um, this next week we're going to be reading about another interesting topic called the movie industry. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write a hook for each one of these. We're going to write both kinds of hooks. The first one is an interesting fact. You're going to look at each story and find the fact that you thought was the best. Now. If you haven't finished each story, this is your chance to do it. And I'm going to look at the beaver. And the beaver has lots of great facts about it. You know, there's its things about its house and how it's underwater. Things about its fur that it's water, you know, it, it keeps them dry. Things about its tail. And, I, you know, I think I'm going to pick that the house is half underwater and half above water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up and it says, you can look at each story, find the fact that you thought was the best, then put that fact into, into a sentence. You can go to this website, thesaurus.com, and enter in interesting and find some great words to use. Some don't work for the article, but others would be perfect. So I'm going to go to go to that. And this is interesting. When I go to thesaurus.com, I look up interesting. Notice there's some dark orange words and then some lighter orange words. These dark ones here and some lighter orange. I can click on them and it's going to take me to other words that are about that. Some of these words mean different things that it's, it's called a shade of meaning for interesting, but it doesn't fit for what we're writing about. Looking at beavers, we can say beavers are alluring. Alluring means to allure means to say, hey, come on, get taste this, taste this. Makes people want to like, tempt them. Beavers aren't tempting. Amusing. Are beavers funny? No. Attractive. Beavers are an attractive animal. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful they are. Oh, no, they're not. Beautiful doesn't work. Compelling. Compelling means to be, to make somebody want to do this. I'm going to, beaver, reading this story about beavers makes me want to have a beaver and have a pet beaver. This didn't quite do that. Other stories do, but this one does not. Curious? Are they? Do they make you curious? Make you want to ask more questions? No. Are they delightful? Maybe. Engaging? I don't know. Exotic? No. We're going to read a story about an exotic. That means a very, really, like, animal from another country. We're going to read one about that. Fascinating? Could be. Impressive? Yes. Intriguing? Yes. We can use any one of those. And we can write then. And I have down here in your store in your um article you can say beavers are fascinating animals beavers are intriguing animals beavers are impressive this is where you become very personal with your summary because we can each choose our own thing okay then what i want you to do is go back to beavers and choose yours if you're doing it with your notebook you're going to type it probably on your main idea side and even in your spiral notebook you probably have more room on that side too write it right in there and just write hook and then write your sentence. It has to be a complete sentence, capital at the beginning, period at the end. Okay. And then go back to giraffes and do that. And then do it for the newest one we're doing this week, the movie capital. Okay. The second type of a hook is called a question. This is going to ask a question, but the interesting fact is you can't use the word you in this. So you can't say, have, did you know that beavers are a fascinating animal? can't say that you use the word you you can't say did you know that beavers are really intriguing nope can't use you but you can say aren't beavers a fascinating animal 
or are beavers really an intriguing animal? Just don't use the word you. So same thing, take your practice at it. And if you have the word you, cross it out and try to write the sentence, the question without you in it. Now turn back to your beavers, giraffes, and the newest movie capital and write a question hook for each. The reason that we're doing both of these is because when we go to actually write our summaries for these, you get to choose which one you want to use. So if you have both of them in there, um, you're not going to want to go back and redo it, but you're going to have it all ready to go and ready to write. Okay? Again, writing notebook, just type it, one for each one of them. Add it to your main idea side because there's plenty of room there. Um, I think I have my... Yep, I do. I have mine open and see how there's plenty of room on the main idea side underneath beavers. I can type it right underneath there. So I would click on that little box next to beavers and enter and put beavers. Oops. Are an interesting animal. I can, oops, but I got to spell interesting, right? I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say, oh, and click on interesting because I meant that. Okay. So that's where you're going to do it. If you are doing it in your spiral notebook, I'm sure on your main idea side, you have plenty of room and just write it, handwrite it in there. And like I said, remember you're saving all these, whether you're doing it in your spiral notebook or on notebook paper, save them all because we're going to come back to each one of these, okay? And we're going to keep adding pieces to it. If you have questions, feel free to email me. But that's what our lesson is on this week, is doing that. And um, I think you're going to do well. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. This is definitely where we become interesting and fascinating and intriguing and um, thought-provoking, unusual, readable, refreshing, stimulating, um, all these words. The source is a great thing. And let me just show you, if I click on fascinating, I get more words that might or may not work. <laughs> and sometimes you can get lost in a thesaurus world and you just get caught. And they have captivating Charming? Are they charming? Meaning, oh, they're so cute. No. Compelling? No, they don't really make me. Engrossing? Um, that's an interesting word, but um, if you want to know what they mean, if you go up to, let me take you up to the top again. Sorry. If you do the synonyms, you can do definitions, and it will tell you the actual definitions of each of these words. Okay, and that takes you to dictionary.com. Fascinating means of great interest or attraction, enchanting, charming, captivating. So that's a good word to use, fascinating. It's a great of all that stuff. Okay, hopefully this makes more sense. If it doesn't, email me and I will help you even some more. Okay, talk to you later and good luck.